Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the Monday Market Report, hosted by Sean of Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful start to your day, wherever you may be. Uh, so this is for the week ending May 10th, 2020. We are going to feature the top coin sales of the week, all modern, of course. Uh, 20th century and 21st century coins will be uh, showcased in here, uh, and they were all graded. So um, all the coins this week uh, were sold on great collections. Okay, nothing of note on eBay to discuss. Um, one thing I noticed after a very, very, very busy um, last week, previous week, so the May 3rd um, week, uh, we have seen a little bit of a reprieve. Um, there was quite a bit going on uh, last week with the Heritage Auctions uh, Central States show. As you guys know, we got one more to uh, kind of highlight here this coming week uh, featuring all of the Lincoln pennies. Uh, but Great Collections was also on fire. All right. So even though we had a little bit slower week this week, uh, I was still able to find some uh, some pretty nice, pretty nice coins to talk about. And... Um, yeah, there, there's a few of them that are very notable that we're going to um, spend a little time on as we come to them. Uh, but before we go ahead and jump into this episode of the Market Report, uh, as always, like the video. Uh, <laughs> that helps a lot. Uh, share the video if you'd like. If you found this video helpful, uh, by all means, go for it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, this, your extra support will go a long way um, in the rankings. Uh, so uh, I appreciate everyone's support and uh, all the views. And uh, what do you guys say? Should we go ahead and jump right into the Monday Market Report, starting with a coin? So I got my handy mouse pointer at the ready. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is like three weeks in a row that we've talked about the sale of a 1992 D um, close AM. Uh, Lincoln Cent, as you guys know, this is the FS901 Cherry Picker's Guide variety. Uh, now the coin that we see here, um, you know, has some issues, uh, especially on the reverse. You have a lot of pitting. Keep in mind that these are copper-coated zinc coins, uh, so the coins themselves uh, suffer a lot from what we call zinc rot. So as soon as it's some sort of moisture or chemical um, permeates through that copper plating uh, you get you begin to get some breakdown of that inner core okay so on this one you can see the little pits um, all around the reverse you even see a couple small ones on the obverse of the coin in addition the coin looks like it's been cleaned at one point um, but in any event this is still a heck of a find um, close am of course the a and m in america is touching and then you have this modified FG initials, which sits a little bit further away from the um, uh, Lincoln Memorial, all right, and as opposed to a regular standard YDAM 1992, whether it's at Denver or Philadelphia. All right, so, um, you know, even a coin in this condition state where uh, you would think it would be less than desirable, it's not completely worthless. Uh, this particular example here sold for $560.25. So it's a, again, it's a PCGS XF details. It is a genuine 92D uh, close AM. All right. All right. So uh, make sure you dust off your uh, proof sets, specifically the 1960. Again, this is a set that you can um, find out there for between $18 and $22 on a regular basis. Uh, this particular one is the Lincoln Scent variety. Uh, it's a PCGS Proof 68 Red, so we don't have any nice cameo or deep cameo to discuss on here. However, this is a really nice variety. Okay, so for those of you that are avid kind of cherry pickers of these sets, um, there's a number of really good looking double dies to find. So this one is FS102 in the Cherry Pickers Guide. Um, as you guys know, there were two different size dates um, uh, that were produced on these dies. So you have a small date and a large date. So this particular one is actually a small date over a large date. 
Okay, you can actually see the, the tail of the smaller six right there, and then you have a little bit of doubling. You can see a smaller zero inside the big zero. All right. Uh, very cool coin, uh, very sought after. Uh, this is one of those double to dies that's uh, uh, out there uh, as kind of a hit list type coin. This one right here sold for $1,018.12. Yeah, so it's a nice little chase piece. Again, that can be found in a uh, relatively affordable um, U.S. coin set. All right, the next one we have here, this is a really solid looking 1945 Lincoln wheat back set. Uh, this one is an exceptionally high graded coin. PCGS, Mint State 67 plus, full red, even CAC certified, adorns this coin. So it, it's got all of the hallmarks of a coin that you would think would sell for quite a bit of money. And it sure did. Okay, so this one right here is intended, again, for those registry sets. Um, you know, that you have the guys that are looking for the top tier, top population coins for each date. So you had a few people engage in a bidding war, and this one was ultimately bid up to $2,562.75 this evening. Okay, pretty nice coin. All right, so the next one that we have here is a little bit tougher date. It's a 1930D. Uh, much tougher to find full red, uh, especially one that exhibits minimal issues. Now this one right here has a few little kind of like marks and bag marks and a few uh, carbon spots. But it's about as good as it can get for a coin of this uh, era. Keep in mind that is uh, somewhere around a depression age, so the quality wasn't quite that great. Uh, so this one is a PCGS Mint State 66 Plus full red. CAC certified. The market for early 30s Lincolns in grades above 66 is always robust. So you know you'll always be making money when you sell these. This coin right here is also part of the Sunset Collection, part number 106. They are continuing on the sales of this fantastic collection. This one coin sold for $1,856.25 this evening. All right, moving on to nickels, okay, and then again, we're going to go ahead and start it off with one of my favorite dates of nickels, uh, not really, 1955 Jefferson Nickel, okay, um, known widely as being the one singular date that looks horrible most of the time. It almost seems like that 99.9% um, .9 of the examples uh, from the Philadelphia Mint in a 55 Exhibit little to no luster. I mean, these things are, were pretty lifeless. For whatever reason, the U.S. Mint at the time had their issues in regards to quality control. So if, if it was bad planchet quality, all right, or um, deteriorated dyes is another issue that happened on these. Um, and just infrequent uh, uh, restoration of the dyes, okay, if a Mint employee had to re-engrave certain areas of the coin it didn't happen as often as some of the earlier 50s jeffersons so this one is a pcgs mint state 66 full steps uh, i reserve my right to uh, politely kind of disagree with the grade uh, you know there there is one um, i mean the planchet marks are on there obviously but there is one nose bar mark right here that goes through all of the steps generally if you're Consulting with a PCGS grader, okay, one of the big things about full steps designation is that it has to be unintrusive um, steps all the way across, and you have six lines, okay? This one I felt like missed the mark by quite a margin. Uh, but this one right here uh, sold for $1,307.25. It does have a little bit of kind of yellowy toning on the reverse, and this is also a Sunset Collection provenance piece. All right, so here's a really nice 1949D Jefferson. Uh, this one is fantastic. I mean, it's very lustrous, minimal contact marks uh, on the actual coin. Uh, this one is a PCGS Mint State 67 with full steps. Um, you know, it's pretty close. I would say that, uh, you know, it's probably 50-50, and, you know, I, I'm okay either way. Uh, the Denver Minted Coins are usually well struck. This one coin right here, Sold for $1,687.50 this evening. 
on to some dimes, okay? And we're going to start it off with a date that we traditionally don't talk about that often unless a really high-grade specimen uh, comes across the auction block. So we have a 1973 Rosie over here, PCGS Mint State 66 with full bands. So uh, it might just be the great collections images, but I don't see a full split on these bands. Uh, it probably looks different in hand or under a magnifier, but you know I think just because of the uh, the light source when these photos were taken uh, kind of obscured those separation lines. So you know I'm pretty sure they're there. Uh, it's just the photos don't really do it that much justice. But this is a really tough coin. All right, so. Dates like 72, 73, 74, and 75 is the toughest of all, are four kind of like really tough key dates when it comes to uh, condition, especially with the fully hammered reverse strike. Now this one right here is sold for $928.12, all right, which is quite a bit of money for a coin like this. If it was a plus graded coin, we'd be probably talking about 1500 to two grand. So that's how much of a difference the plus designation would make. Now here's a really nice exceptional toned coin. Okay, so you have some pretty nice colors on this one. The slab label is busy. Okay, it's a 1963 Rosie. It's a Mint State 67 plus star, which designates uh, eye appeal, and full torch, which means that it has a fully separate, fully struck. Uh, reverse with the separation line on the top and bottom set of bands that goes all the way across. All right, so this one ha has quite the trifecta going on with eye appeal, grade, less contact marks, and toning. So how much did this one sell for? Well, another thing to also keep in mind, it's also QA certified. It is also another one of those sunset collection pieces. This one sold for $3,000.38. Um you you don't see Roosevelt dimes, especially during the 60s or 70s, that fetch this kind of money. But again, this this one had the sun, moon, and stars just righteously aligned. Uh, and then there you go, three thousand dollars later. I, I mean, I think that's a pretty good trade off right there. All right, so we got the one obsolete coin on the list out of the way, and that's the 1939 Mercury dime. Uh, a really bright, very blast white example uh, exhibits an original skin. Um, you know, it's not really toning on the obverse. Uh, it's just uh, maybe a little bit of oxidation, but the coin is just clean. Uh, it's a nicely graded PCGS Mint State 67 Plus with full split bands. Uh, the reverse strike is absolutely hammered. Now, the 39 date is a very high mintage coin. Uh, and a very well-struck coin, okay? I actually have an example in my collection of a 39 that grades out 66 plus full bands. So they do exist, and um, the coin I, I bought was about $110. So you don't necessarily have to get a 67 plus, but this is just a straight-up registry set bomb right here. Really cool coin. So this one sold for $1,594.12 this evening. All right, so this is probably one of the tougher dates of Washington Quarters to come across, mostly in part because these were never available in mint sets. So your best bet was to find one in a BU roll, you know, or upon release, okay? And then from there, you're just really uh, rolling rolling the dice. Maybe you'll find one in this kind of condition in pocket change, but it's, you know... Um, 37 some odd years later, it's kind of unlikely that you'll come across something like this in this particular condition out in circulation. Now, it's a PCGS Mint State 67, which is a top end grade for this coin, and this one sold for $1,027.12. All right, a very pricey coin, especially when you get to 67 plus. You're talking a coin that's worth probably four to six thousand dollars. It is that difficult. All right, the next one that we have here is the 1967 Washington. Instead, this one is a special mint set collection piece. It's a uh, NGC Mint State 69 Cameo. So it has a little bit of defining frost on there. And uh, the fields are pretty nice. I mean, they got some blackness to it. 
Uh, so you have the, uh, the contrast really setting off with each other. Now this coin right here uh, is one of two that were graded at NGC. So it's a pop two. There's not too many of these in the 69 Cameo. Uh, this example right here sold for $2,082.38. Cherry pick alert, you could find this in a set that traditionally cost you seven to ten dollars keep that in mind as you're going through those uh sets maybe at a dealer or a show all right another quarter we've been highlighted with some pretty nice impressive quarters this week here's another one it's a 1960d a very common dated what we call scrap silver piece only this one probably graded a, a notch above all the other ones in that role it's a NGC Mint State 67 example. It's also a Sunset Collection piece. And this one sold for $1,009.12. All right, so we got a couple more quarters. How about 56D with some uh, nice swath of color and originality all over it? So this was a coin that was well-preserved uh, for the longest time until it was discovered it is an NGC Mint State 67 Plus. Uh, again, these coins of the 50s, especially 56 and up to about 1963, are all well struck. All right, so you're not going to find a lot of issues on any of these coins in terms of weakness, deteriorated dyes, and all that great stuff. This one is a Denver minted coin, and is also CAC certified. Uh, this Sunset Collection example. Sold for $4,230, uh, a pretty nice example with everything going for it. This is a wise buy for a registry set uh, recipient. All right, so here's a tough date, uh, only this is the least tough out of the two branch mints. It's a 55D Washington quarter. This one grades out NGC Mint State 67. All right, so it's a really nice high-end grade. Now, if we're talking about 55 Philadelphia, in a mid state 67 we'd be talking about a coin that's worth probably four to five times of what this one sold for so this one here brought home eleven hundred twenty five dollars and it is also worth noting that this is in an older ngc holder so there might be room for a grade bump improvement time only tells it really depends on what the new owner will do with the coin and then finally, the last coin on the Monday Market Report is going to be a 1968D Candy Half Dollar. Okay, you guys know this as being uh, a widely hoarded 40% silver composition coin. All right, so a lot of these were either dumped into circulation or um, there were some of them that were archived in original BU rolls. Uh, this one looks like it was... Uh, uh, purchased as a singular coin and maybe put in an album, all right? But with all of the toning on both sides of the coin, this one was well-preserved in an environment in which it was subjected to maybe a lot of acidity or chemicals from the paper or wherever it was stored at, in addition to maybe a little bit of heat and humidity, okay? So you put all of these factors together and then you have a coin that has this um, pretty nice toning. Uh, so this one is an NGC Mint State 67 plus example. It is also a Sunset Collection piece. It also is secondary certified by QA. And with the toning, you have a coin that sold for $3,037.50. Okay, again, yes, these coins can achieve that kind of money, but you got to take a look at the variables that go into what makes the coin valuable. All right, so you have the high-end grade, okay? That kicks in a certain price level. You have the toning, if it's eye appealing, with a number of various colors that are natural to that spectrum, will bump the cost and the value of the coin another 20 to 30 percent. All right, some people don't agree with toning. Okay, for the longest time, there are a lot of old school people that see toning as tarnish, and that is kind of the correct vernacular. For something that you see going on here and a lot of these folks well their remedy to the situation throw it in the jewelry cleaner and get it back to blast white only in this case if you would do that you would lose about a thousand bucks of value on this coin because these coins because of their work of art of the toning aspect of it 
uh, really provides a huge bump in value. So keep that in mind. If you come across a coin with some nice toning that's not too terminal, and terminal would be like dark browns and blacks, all right, you're going to have something there that has a lot of value. So keep that in mind as you go to sell or go through your collection for value. All right, so that's going to do it tonight for the Monday Market Coin Report for the week ending May 10th. Okay, we are uh, coming toward the end of the spring season, and uh, summer is just around the corner. So with everything going on in the world right now, okay, uh, a lot of people not working, how does that translate to the coin market? Uh, we've seen a very robust coin market up to this point, but I think I could attribute some of that to maybe the stimulus money for a lot of people. Uh, but then again, when you have registry set people, okay, it seems like they have just infinite deep pockets. So it's kind of hard to say, are people going to be selling more coins as, let's say, this whole pandemic kind of plays out and, uh, you know, continues on into the fall? There's going to be more need to dump collections and coins and everything like that. So we're going to see. It's going to be an interesting next four to six months. And, uh, you know, I'll be right there every step of the way to uh, kind of shed some light and to provide the breaking news on some of the big time, you know, movements in the market. So thank you guys for watching again. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for instant notification. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound, as always, uh, Coinaholics. <laughs> we are discovering together, okay? We discover together, then we can make big things happen in this hobby. It's been a lot of fun talking about these coins this week. You guys have a very easy Monday. I will see you on the next video. You guys take care.